Hey guys, I just paid $12.50 to watch half of a bad movie. If you read my review for Volume 1, you know that my showing for that film was the strangest experience I've ever had at the movies, and not because of the film itself. This time around, my time at the theater was a little bit less insane. I mean, yeah, MoviePass is hemorrhaging money, and even though they mostly covered the cost of Volume 1 two months ago, this time it was a premium showing and I had to pay out of pocket. Yeah, the bartender messed up my drink order again and charged me for a double when I ordered a single. Yeah, the same two minutes of trivia questions replayed over and over before the movie started. And yeah, they showed the scary love music video by The Neighborhood again, and it still had nothing to do with the film. But tonight was tame in comparison to the shit show that was last time. If you missed my review for Volume 1, I'll give you a quick recap. The film surprised me. It was competently made and actually attempted to be, not trying to be so bad that it was good like the Room. It was very low budget and it had lots of sound mixing issues, but I loved the use of the original music by the band Nice Legs, the story had some unique ideas, and it was entertaining enough. I gave it a 5 out of 10. Best Friends Volume 2 is what I expected from Volume 1. It's a pile of soggy water trash that doesn't work as a film. All of the positives that I found in the first half are gone, and all of the negatives are still present and even worse. If there were any songs by Nice Legs this time around, I must have missed them. Instead, there is a score, perhaps still by the drummer of Imagine Dragons like in part one, the information is missing from IMDB so I just don't know, that visits numerous genres and feels like a hodgepodge of royalty-free music without a cohesive theme. The unique story beats are gone and the film plays out like a bad western with obvious crime drama twists, void of any kind of suspense. The dialogue is much worse, with exposition, repetition, and juvenile one one-liners comprising the bulk of screen time. The glimpses of subtlety from Volume 1 step aside for endless hand-holding, in-your-face metaphors, and pushy monologues about friendship. The sound design is still awful. One scene in particular, where Greg Sestero as John pulls a blanket over himself, sounded like a tarp full of gravel being dragged over a pile of 2 by 4s So loud it drowned out the overly loud generic score. Pack all of this up with endless filler and you have yourself a film that completely fell apart. The story picks up where it left off, with John and his girlfriend trying to get the money they feel they are entitled to. There's a new main character in this half, Rick, the girlfriend's uncle. Remember Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite, the loser that thinks he's cool and that he could have made it big as a football star if it wasn't for a setback? Rick is the exact same character. He chews up screen time, being annoying, talking about his glory days, and making sexual comments every time he opens his mouth. Even though I really didn't like the movie, I don't want to ruin it for you guys, so I won't get into what he does. But I will say that if you don't see it coming, you've never watched a movie before. In fact, even if you ignored how easy everything is to figure out, you still have these flash forwards to a conversation between Greg and Tommy Wiseau's character where Tommy literally tells you everything before it happens in the narrative. As you can imagine, this kills any excitement and it makes the scenes that will play out later worthless and boring to watch. There is quite a bit of action in the climax and it is directed by someone who doesn't have any experience with action scenes. Punches are miles away from landing, wrestling is poorly choreographed, and the editing of the scenes makes it look like everyone is moving through mud in slow motion. I can't think of anything I liked about this film. That isn't to say that it's a complete train wreck, just that it's predictable, derivative, boring, poorly acted, and a huge disappointment when compared to what the first film said up. The first film wasn't without its faults. It wasn't good either, but compared to this mess, it had a lot going for it. I mentioned in my review for Volume 1 that there were scenes that seemed unnecessary, but that I couldn't say for certain because I needed to see the whole film to determine whether they ended up mattering. They don't. None of them. The movie should have been cut down to a single two-hour film. There is an excess of wasted time and side characters that add nothing to the story. In part two, John and his girlfriend go to a bed and breakfast and there is this cringy, drawn-out, horribly acted scene with the innkeeper that lasted five minutes and went nowhere. The Coen brothers built a style around these types of scenes where an interesting side character is introduced for little reason beyond the entertainment of the contained scene. If that's what was being a 
attempted here, it failed miserably. Running mysteries are brushed over, including what happened to John's family that they just kind of mention at the end because they didn't want to forget about it. The last shot was a lead-in to a possible sequel and was embarrassing. The big reveal is played for lighthearted comedy and it felt totally distant from everything else that happened on screen. It's a mess, plain and simple. There were brief flashes of entertainment. You can laugh at it, especially during a magnificent scene of overacting by the girlfriend towards the end. And when bunched together with Volume 1, it is a bit easier to tolerate. But Best Friends Volume 2 is so poorly done, it makes the movie as a whole worth skipping. Two and a half out of ten.